What's up guys? We're out here in Greenville, South Carolina. Visited Falls Park by the Reedy. And we're here to talk about anxiety. So, real quick, the five main points we're gonna cover is first, your emotions are keys. So the key here is to use the right key at the right time and the right place. Second, we're gonna be talking about anxiety as a key for getting things done when you feel like you do not have the skill set necessary or you're not good enough for the situation you're about to handle. Third, we're gonna talk about the importance of placing anxiety behind you. So a lot of people have stuff in front of them, we're gonna actually put it behind us so that we feel impelled, we feel propelled forward to a greater skill set. Then we're gonna talk about using your anxiety as a way to fuel you to get yourself into the best state possible, getting into a flow state, going from Clark Kent and turning into Superman. All right, so let's start off by talking about emotions as keys. So a couple of episodes ago, we had Tom Shea, former Navy SEAL, 20 year Navy SEAL at that, come in and talk to us about how it is that he's able to get the things done that he gets done. And he said that it's because he uses his emotions as keys. So what does that mean? I want you to imagine that in your life you have a ton of different opportunities, a bunch of different doors to new opportunity. And what your emotions do is they get you to move forward to take on that new opportunity. And so imagine you have a, a key ring, kind of like a janitor. You have a key ring and on that key ring is every single one of your emotions, okay? There's seven primary emotions. So one emotion is seeking. So you're gonna to wanna to use the seeking emotion when it is that you have to expand your mind, you have to expand your experiences, you have to go forage for some new food. You have rage and anger. You're gonna use that key whenever it's that you have to protect your resources. You're, gonna, you're about to lose something, someone's stepping over your boundaries. You have sadness, that comes up whenever there's something that was important that you lost. Sadness indicates that there was something that was really cool there and now you no longer have it. We have play, that's gonna be for us to interact with others and learn new things. If you wanna learn something new, you wanna use the play key. You also have, um, just in general, panic. So panic's there whenever you lose someone that's important to you. And fear and anxiety, that's gonna be there for whenever you have a situation that you're not good enough for, you don't have the skill set for. Uh, the last two emotions are care, which you're gonna use whenever you're talking to someone that's, you know, you wanna make sure that they're doing well. This is if you're raising children, or if you're gonna get a, a partner, and lust is the other one, and that's, you know, whenever you wanna make babies. But again, today we're focused on anxiety, and we're gonna be learning how to use the key of anxiety in order to unlock new opportunities in your life. So now let's talk about anxiety. All the time I get messages from people or I get questions from people about anxiety, preventing them from doing whatever it is that they want to do in their lives. Well, the first thing to understand is anxiety, that's your flight response. That's you're out in the wild, you see an animal that you know you can't fight off and so you, run a, you want to run away from that animal. Well, we don't really live in the jungle these days, um, unless you live in Greenville apparently. <laughs> but. Uh, but we do have really scary situations like something that's going on at work, maybe a promotion that you just got added into and you're not sure whether or not you have the skill set for it. Well, the key here is that anxiety signals, again, that you don't have the skill set to handle the situation. So what we're gonna focus on is building yourself so you do have that skill set or demonstrating to yourself that, hey, it's actually way, way worse to not take action. As I just mentioned, we have to prepare ourselves for some type of challenge that we might not have the skill set for yet. A good example is before I took on the job as the director of the Daily Bread, I was studying for medical school and I took the MCAT and I ended up getting a perfect score on the MCAT. So out of 50,000 people who took the medical college's admissions test, I got one of the top 100 scores out of anybody and the entire time I was anxious. Meanwhile, there's people, they tell me about their test anxiety and they feel like they're gonna fail their test because of that anxiety. The key here is that I told myself, okay, I'm not good enough yet to be where I wanna be, so what I wanna do is just prepare myself. I wanna keep on taking practice tests 
over and over and over again. I wanna keep on putting myself in the situation that's gonna come up. Another example is when I played football. When we played football, our philosophy during practice was play in practice the way you're gonna play in a game. So I, even as a freshman, I would line up against the best wide receivers who were seniors. And I would go as hard as I possibly could in practice in that situation so that when I was in games, by the time I was lined up against my opponent, I'd already gone against the best. I already was used to that situation. So game time was really easy for me and I had no anxiety because I knew I was going against the guys who were all Americans or all state players and I was going as hard against them as I was in the game. So in you, in your own situation, ask yourself whether or not you're able to recreate whatever it is that you're gonna be facing in your life. So, I mean, even in this video right now, I'm acting as a substitute for Tyler so that Pablo has practice and he knows what it's gonna be like to work with Tyler. So, by, so that by the time he's working with Tyler, it's no big deal and he just doesn't have to feel anxious about it. So just focus on that and ask yourself, what can I do to recreate the situation as closely as possible? The next point to cover is the fact that anxiety is your fear response. And what happens with most people that I talk to is they have anxiety about something ahead of them. So they're here, they want to jump over here, but their goal is blocked by all that fear and anxiety. Now, something you have to realize is that you're going to feel fear almost no matter what. It's a pretty normal thing for us as humans, but what you can do is you can put that fear behind you. So how, what does that even mean? What does that look like? Ask yourself whatever it is that you want to do, whatever that goal is, and really take out a pen and paper and write down everything good that's gonna come from you even just trying to go after that goal, just practicing for that goal, just learning the skill set in the attempt to meet that goal. Write down all those positive benefits and then write down everything that's gonna happen to you if you don't do it. And what you really wanna focus on here is you wanna make yourself unbelievably scared, horrified even, about what happens if you don't do this challenge, if you don't even go for it. So in that way, our fear is gonna be behind us and it's gonna be motivating us to move forward towards the life that we want. Because again, we're here, we're in one place, we wanna to move to the other place, our actual goal, but we have to like climb over this fear and it's a whole bit of energy. Maybe that's the best way to think of it. You have all this energy in the way that you have to expend. It's like paying a toll over here. But if you put it behind you, all that energy, instead of having to waste energy to get rid of this, now you're using that energy to propel you forward. Cause you're saying, well, crap, man. I don't want, I wanna make sure that I never go back to that place. So for example, when I took this position for the daily bread, man, I was so anxious. I was thinking to myself, well, what if I'm not good enough at making videos? What if, what if all these people look at me and they think I'm a complete idiot? But then I thought about the fact that, well, what happens when I learn the skill set of making these videos? What happens when I learn marketing? What happens when I learn how to make all these new connections? Even if I fail miserably, I'm gonna come out better as opposed to what I was previously doing where I was stuck in my life and it was a place that there was just, there was no moving forward. There was nothing that was gonna happen and I knew I would just be way worse off and that propelled me forward to take on this new position and really move my life forward. So the main point here is take your fear and take it out of what's standing in between you and your goal and instead move it behind you by showing yourself that it's way scarier to not take action. This last thing, this is gonna get kind of mystical, it's gonna get kind of weird, but it's a real thing. We're gonna talk about getting rid of your anxiety or at least using your anxiety appropriately by combining everything else we talked about and practicing our skill set so that we can get into the flow state. The flow state is something that's been described by every culture around the world, throughout the world, throughout history, and it's, if you ever watch Dragon Ball Z, it's the equivalent of going Super Saiyan. If you're a Superman fan, it's the difference of being Clark Kent and becoming Superman. 
And it's the place that you go when you're doing something that you've practiced a lot. You're doing something that you're comfortable with. So when it comes to anxiety, we're talking about you want to get rid of your anxiety by getting into the flow state, by having practiced something so much that it's just second nature to you. And knowing that this is a bit of a challenge, but it's gonna stretch you appropriately. So when you get into that place, when you get into that zone, life kind of becomes this, this game, this video game. So for example, when I edit a video, I can easily get into the flow state and be there for seven, eight hours even, as I'm making something that I know is absolute fire. But when I make a video that I know is gonna be incredible, I actually get a little bit scared about making that video. And so the first 10 minutes of me making that video is harder than the next seven hours and 50 minutes that it might take to make that video. Like really think about that. So when it comes to anxiety, the key here is just getting yourself to commit to whatever it is that you're doing for at least 10 minutes and getting to that place where you're using all of your skill sets. So I literally mean take your phone, take a timer, take some app on your computer and punch in 10 minutes and force yourself to sit there and do whatever it is that you need to get done. And if you've done everything else that I mentioned in this video, if you practiced appropriately and you put your fears behind you so that they propel you forward, then man, you're gonna access this new place, this new state that is just incredible, it's amazing. And it suddenly takes you from anxiety to ultra confident and ultra aware of everything that's going on around you. So I don't really care what it is that you do. I mean, I mentioned video editing as an example, but maybe it's that you wanna write that book, but you're scared of putting your thoughts on paper. Or maybe it's that you wanna ask that girl out. That it's, it still applies just the same. Um, you wanna get over that initial anxiety, right? And you just wanna commit yourself to doing it for the first couple of moments and when you do that, the rest of your mind, the rest of your body, the rest of your spirit itself will take over and you will get things done. Well, anyways guys, thank you so much for watching this. I'm TJ, Pablo's here with me as well, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.